What does basketball mean to you? Is it an escape? A means to make it out? A hobby you do for fun and self-improvement? It seems like in the Philippines, it's all of that. And honestly, probably more. In fact, I've been reflecting on it for a few weeks and still don't really know how to put it into words. It's inconceivable until you truly experience it. And we were lucky enough to witness this live and in person for almost an entire week and be fully immersed into every single part of it. Next time, we'll be able to visit more of this beautiful place. But in Metro Manila, one of the top three most densely packed cities in the world, you'll experience a love and a passion for hoops like nowhere else. It's like an oasis in the middle of chaos, a spark of hope, passion, and positivity, and even in dark times. And it's inspired me in ways I would have never expected. So I'll take you through our entire journey here, and hopefully you can get something out of it as well. This is Grow the Game Philippines, part one of hopefully a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Manila, Philippines. Come please to announce that we are for our Well, we are uh, in Asia. We are here. We are in... We are here. The Philippines. Australia was a breeze. It would be a little bit different. So, as always, some backstory here. The Philippines was always a dream for me to explore. I will most travel to the Philippines for this, although that wouldn't suck. It's literally been on my bucket list for probably 10 years now. But to come here for who? Like I got these pictures of Hoopers in the Philippines saved on my phone from middle school. And I used to look at them for motivation. Yeah, crazy full circle moment. So anyways, through our nonprofit, the Athlete Empowerment Initiative, I set out to not only go visit the Philippines, experience the culture, but also to give back a bit. To raise money and pour back into this culture and community the best we can by building a basketball court painting another, running some events to help spark the culture a bit, really immersing ourselves with the community and kids, and then afterwards, organizing some leagues and some other cool things to help these youngins get access to more organized hoops. And hopefully, then maybe they can be those next role models for their community one day. So anyways, long story short, we scrapped it together, it made it happen, so we're here. First time in Asia, and it's definitely like nowhere I've ever seen. And of course, the first hoop sighting literally in the middle of an office parking lot. Check it out, Oh yeah. What's this? It's like soya. Like soya? Yeah. Okay. It's never the perfect time. Three, Woo. two, one. <laughs> Yo, come on, bro. <laughs> it's gotta be just a texture for you. Taste is good, bro. Tastes solid. Tastes like maple syrup. It's like I like the texture. It's so obviously, I couldn't wait to get out to the courts for renovating and see what's up. Experience the culture for the first time. And then, the rain. Now, I live in Miami, so I'm like, all right, how bad can traffic be? It's only 14 kilometers. We're trying to pull up at four, so leave around 3.30, all good. Get in the car, ETA's around five. All right, that's already crazy. But wait, there's more. Map looks like this. ETA hits 5.30 and then six, and then 6.30. Yeah, almost three hours to go 14 kilometers. Crazy. So, safe to say my back was cooked. But realistically, it was a good reminder of how much different this city is. A combination of elements and infrastructure, or lack thereof, that is at times plagued a beautiful population with hard times and difficulty. But at the end of the day, we got there safe, and as soon as we pull up and see the progress that's been made so far, that long drive goes out the window. Yes, sir. <laughs> so this first court is one where we'll be holding our 3x3 tournament to kick this whole thing off. It's covered, kind of stadium vibes, all that. So this is a cool project to really commemorate Pinoy hoops. For the last two days yeah. now. Y'all move quick, man. The other court, I see that vibe already. That's like the tenement vibe. Yeah. Honestly, when I started the tenement, it's just like what I, we're doing. Mm -hmm. Coming here, setting in it, seeing something special about it, yeah. putting fire into it, keeping the, 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 the surroundings involved. This right here is the tenement, the court that Mike's referring to. Something like 10 years ago, Mike jumped in and pretty much saved this place. These people here deserve better. They, they shouldn't be 
just thrown out. Breathed life into a forgotten community that had the makeups for a self-sustainable apartment complex built around basketball. To the point that LeBron was walking into this place, looking up at thousands of people. Yeah. And LeBron Jay is walking in, but that shit fucking shook the whole world. Here is one of the biggest sports public figure in the world, walking into the most disregarded project housing in a third world country. So it's like two opposite ends, but here he is in this building, which proves that we was not wrong about knowing how special this place is. Unfortunately, big brands got involved and created some politics that have pretty much stunted the organic progress a bit. But regardless, it shows you what can be done here through who. So for me, telling you off the bat, yeah. from the heart, that that place that we just found by the bridge got that same aura, same freaking, you know, like, like same basketball box. They had no funding for that. They yeah. just put the hoop. Really? Hoping that the government will see mm. so they can get the help. But what it attracted is uh, me yeah. landing here <laughs> and me throwing it your way and yeah. saying, yo, let's fucking do it. Yeah. So basically he felt that what he did was effective. That he, he what he was fishing for came. That's us. Yeah. Wasn't you know what how, saying, how like, he expected, but it happened. That's it. Now, now we gonna just keep breathing life into it. And the way it's positioned, it's like a border of Makati and Pasi. When really? you see it, is it still raining, or it just sounds like nah. it's like, a drizzle? Like, yeah, yeah, if anything, a little drizzle. Yeah, let's, I'm let's down to walk. Yeah, nah, yeah, bro. I don't want to feel. So, hearing that this bridge court has even the foundation for something like this is crazy. We could feel it from the jump, even in the dark. And I kid you not when I say I've never experienced kids like this. Them just running around everywhere, playing. The pure happiness, the willingness to just figure things out. It's something I've never experienced. And we'll keep diving into this over the course of the weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Came back, hooped a little bit to break in the indoor. And then fast forwarding to the next day, probably back within nine to 10 hours max. Little by little, progress was being made. It's almost there. The fact that these guys are free handing, all of this is crazy. These dudes are talented. I think they've been working, I want to say through the night, last night. They were here till like 3 a.m. they said two nights ago. Went all night, I think. I saw a story at like 4 or 5 a.m. Back at it all day today to be ready by tomorrow. So it's really these guys work that's making all this possible. It's kind of surreal to see. And then the goal is to kind of have it be sustainable where we have, you know, we create jobs through there. We have kids grow up, we have leagues there. It's not just kind of coming in here and painting it and putting the concrete in and seeing it one time and leaving, like really hopefully making an impact over a long period of time, and coming back, running events here um, and doing things that can build some longevity and, and actually, um, you know, move people's lives forward. Now in the daylight, we can really get a feel for everything. The story of this court's pretty cool. Well, in the Philippines, I guess you could have called it a court, but anywhere else in the world, it was just a couple hoops put up by the community in some rare open space. And as you can see, before all this started, it was just rock, gravel, 
and dirt, and it was still popping, barefoot and all. So right before we arrived, the whole hood was able to come out and help get it together, put the concrete down, and now it's already a little epicenter through rain and all. Figuratively and literally, this court is pushed into the back corner of a city. Across the water is a bit more bougie part of town, but down here, this isn't a commercial area. This isn't somewhere where you'll have many outsiders, foreigners, big brands, or events naturally coming to hoop, which is kind of what makes it the perfect place. It's where you find the most genuine hoop, the most genuine energy many times. And with a bridge overlooking it, plenty of seating, places for kids to just play and watch, it's kind of every hooper's dream aesthetically. Yet it was kind of just left out to dry. And we ain't letting that happen. So of course, had to break it in for the first day, and I realized this is my first real experience hooping out here, and all the stats and things I'd hear from other people that I naturally just had a hard time believing before coming out here. You know, over 50% of the population hooping, everyone hooping in sandals or barefoot, the talent level on the courts. All these started to come to life and seem a bit more real each second. So after a day of hanging out, helping out here and there, and getting a feel for everything, we got the chance to go to a game where we could really see what Philippines Hoops was about. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but there are certain times where you walk in somewhere and the energy just consumes you. This was one of those times. I've been to a lot of basketball games in my young life, and a lot of packed games too. But for some reason, this one takes the cake for the best environment I've experienced. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but it was different. And part of this was the very nature of the game. It's a playoff game, neighborhood versus neighborhood. The best youngins from each community come out to play each other, with everyone behind them watching a game the entire country loves. So you can imagine this is a little bit different passion-wise and energy-wise than maybe two AAU teams. And one of these teams represents Barangay Panetta, the neighborhood these two courts are situated in. So you can see the entire life cycle of hoops here. Looking on the side of the court, you see really young kids, even some we met at the court that day, learning and feeding their early love for the game. Then some slightly older kids, watching as players who were in their situation just a few years ago, represent their neighborhood and serve as a role model for them. Then, of course, I'm sure the OGs who used to playing games like this, watching as the new generation comes up. And knowing that all of this can happen on courts like the ones from just around the corner, it's crazy cool to see. So by today, Saturday, all the work had been done on this court, and it's time to officially celebrate and kick it off right, today with the 3x3 tournament. So the thing about Philippines hoops I noticed is that despite how hard and physically they play, nobody gets mad. It's crazy. In the States, or honestly most places in the world, if you lose, it's tough and even frowned upon to smile with your opponent. Here, it just seemed normal. It's bigger than the game. 
Elsewhere, if somebody fouls the crap out of you, what's your first instinct? Probably a little bit of retaliation or hostility. Here, still good vibes. And this is beautiful. You see it on outdoor courts, TVA, college games, everywhere. Obviously, there are going to be their outliers, but as somebody who's traveled to a lot of places and hooped, this was cool to see. Especially because, yeah, this is a physical game out here. It's hard to really capture on camera. Trust me when I say nothing comes easy. And I think that's partially why these players are so crafty out here. They're constantly dealing with high levels of physicality, with no or limited shoes, and just making it work. And the other biggest thing I realized in this tournament is that girls here can hoop. And in my humble and inexperienced, but also very curious opinion, it's because a lot of them grow up hooping without as many limits on them. Not as many limits on playing with the guys, on their play style, what they can do on the court, all that. This goes for every local Filipino hooper, it seems, regardless of gender. But the results on the female side surprised me. They are physical, aggressive, they also have the tactical finesse and willingness to play as a team that honestly had me watching the girls side even more here. So overall, tourney was a success. Not only a cool way to kick it off for everyone involved, but also selfishly, a way for me to vibe with new people, experience a new style of hoops even more, and continue to learn about what makes it so special. But then finally, Sunday was kind of the day we were waiting for. Everything is done at the bridge court, so it's time to really break it in with a party and a hoop session. And this day was incredible. Just a bunch of different people, all various stages of life, experience in basketball, in a community that doesn't get the most light sometimes, just celebrating the game, but more importantly, what can be done with it. And honestly, I didn't even realize this till later, but one of the most beautiful parts of me is that damn near none of these kids have phones. So it kind of forces them to socialize, to laugh, to play, to explore, to try new things, and do what kids are supposed to do. And as a kid, you know how it is. You got unlimited energy. So they go all day, all night long, jumping, hooping, really whatever they can find. And I think this is just another underrated reason as to why the average hooper out here ends up so crafty, creative, and just moves so well. Usually without any training or even organized hoops at a young age. All these kids just play a ton of sports, push themselves to try new things as kids, and rarely have boxes placed around them on and off the court for what they can and can't do in terms of play. That's a pretty damn good way to grow up. Game. This is an all-star weekend, beautiful historic moment. By any means, basketball. When I say by any means, you say basketball. By any means, it's game time. <gasps> and lastly, what's a basketball event to celebrate a new basketball court without some sort of all-star challenge game? So a couple of my guys who were helping out with the project and myself teamed up against some of the OGs who were hooping on this court way before the concrete was even here, and we got after it. Speed 
And it's important to realize that cool stuff like this around hoops is happening all over the Philippines, pretty much on a daily basis. It's just a microscopic piece of a much bigger puzzle. But for this community, it was definitely the outset of something that we think can be really cool. So that's a wrap, but not really. The next few days we spent checking out some games, experiencing the culture even more, running some camps and some more workouts, but also just planning how to build on this, how to spark this community and others moving forward to not only have that resource, but to start to elevate bit by bit, to build a mini community around the court itself. So we'll be back for sure to revisit the community, check out others around the country, dive into the inner workings of the pro league and all that. But for now, hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of the love and the passion that goes into Pinoy Hoops and how beautiful it can be. And if you want to help us continue to build here, make sure to check out the link in the description. We're going to try to do some really cool things. Also, make sure to check out our other episodes and stay tuned for our next one, which is going to detail the South Sudanese basketball community in Australia, one of the quickest growing, most impressive basketball communities in the world right now.